You can blame it on Gran Turismo or possibly the Fast and the Furious, but there are certain cars in the performance car canon that every single collector wants to own an example of. And the A80 Supra, or Mark IV, is probably one of those cars, isn't it? This is an example that's going through on February the 25th at Manor Park Classics, and it's one of the best cars of its type that I've ever seen because it's a UK manual twin turbo in black, one of only 250 cars that came into the country, full service history with 15 stamps in the book, 13 of which are main dealers. If you really want an A80 Supra, I'm about to show you probably one of the best cars for sale in the UK at the moment. And the only way to do that properly is to go for a drive. Tough gig. Well, let's take this rarity for a spin. Now the first thing you notice when you get into a Japanese car of this era, whether it is a Corolla or a Supra, is the lightness of the controls. What the Japanese were absolutely brilliant at was just taking big hairy chested machines like this and weighting all the controls, whether that's the gear change. Don't forget that is a good Trag six speed as well. Some meaty old gearbox or the steering or the clutch weight. And everything is like driving your Nan's Micra. So you've got a car here that's got 326 brake horsepower from that 2JZ engine but is as docile and as easy to drive as any little hot hatch or any little shopping car that came out of Japan. Now this car competed very, very heavily with the Porsche in terms of dynamics, in terms of speed, numbers, horsepower, torque, all of that kind of sexy stuff. What Toyota never managed to do in image terms at the time was create a car that was as desirable. If you threw down your Toyota key in the pub, it was never gonna have quite the cachet that the Porsche did. But sitting here, and these cars were 38,000 pounds when they were new, sitting here, I can tell you, as an owner of a couple of Porsches, this car is every bit as good. In fact, it's easier to drive. I would say nicer to live with. It's much rarer. Don't forget, as I said, 250 UK cars in manual. Such a rare old beast. You won't see many of them, you can imagine, can't you, 1993, you can either have this or the equivalent 911, and you've walked into the showroom, and I would imagine why this didn't sell against the Porsche was the cabin plastics are very Japanese. They're a little bit, dare I say, low rent by the standards of the time, but the car was cheaper. The car was cheaper than the equivalent Porsche, despite the fact it was much, much faster. And I actually think the ride quality of this, the handling, the way it sits, it's just so benign. I'm obviously not going too quickly in it today because this is a car that's for sale and we're driving it accordingly, but what a wonderful thing. This car does not drive like a 30-year-old car. It doesn't drive like a three-year-old car. It's just very evident that this thing has had a very easy life, has had a lot of money spent on it and been in the care of somebody that really loved it. Everything works, aircon works, all the heating ventilation works, every pixel of every display works, every LCD fires up beautifully car needs nothing other than a good home we're going to get it fully detailed at Manor Park Classics to make sure it's perfect for you but as you can see it just bowls along you could daily drive this in the summer I'd keep it out of the salt in the winter but for sure and the mileage is nice too it's low enough to be rare and interesting but high enough so you're not going to have to tuck it away and you can't use it I've done that before I bought cars with five six thousand miles true collector's cars and you can never use them for a car like this 66 thousand miles add another two or three a year not going to matter. Now the UK Supras of this spec have a couple of great party tricks, one of which being the auto front spoiler. They never work, any of them, because they've all packed up work in about 20 years ago. Of course, this one still works. Just press this button here, down she pops. So what is the fuss about? Well, the fuss is all about the fact that you can, with this beautiful 326 twin turbo engine, just drop it and the waft, the urge, is just immediate. It's just there straight away. And this thing is so crisp and tight. Like I say, totally belies the fact it's a 30-year-old car. It does not feel like that at all. And those turbos are absolutely singing, both of them. And all that power is there for you almost immediately, because that's the way the twin turbo worked. Basically, one spins up faster, feeds the second one, and you get a much more immediate urge, rather than running one huge turbo to use two gives you a much greater acceleration. I mean, the numbers on this car are still respectable today, particularly the power. So what's it like to live with on the road? Well, the first thing you notice, as I say, is how incredibly easy it is to drive. You've got this wonderful thing in the A80 Super, this wraparound dashboard. People talk about aeroplane ergonomics. They talk about the fighter dash cockpit. 
with a Supra. The Mark IV really does have it. Everything's around you, everything's to hand. Anyone that laments the modern issue of touchscreens where everything's on a touchscreen, this is good old-fashioned buttons. It's got its original stereo too, and it just drives very, very nicely. So why do you want one of these? Well, they are, I think, going to be one of the truly iconic cars. You can blame it on the very low numbers. You can blame it on the fact that they didn't bring many in. They didn't sell that many because they were a very expensive car at the time and the badge snobbery that existed. But fast forward to today, and all the collectors all over the world, particularly in America, have realized this is a truly great car. What's hard to find is a car that's completely unmolested. It's very hard to find one that hasn't been modded, didn't go through the Fast and Furious era with turbo upgrades, body kits. What's amazing about this particular one, none of that's happened. Exactly as it was spec'd by the original owner, and there's only one owner, put it through his company when he bought it and into his own personal name subsequently. So one owner car, 15 stamps in the service book, 13 of the main dealer. This is the stuff that all of us dealers dream of finding. It's the kind of car that just has everything. And it drives so nicely. It doesn't even drive like the 66,000 miles it's got. It drives like a 30,000 mile car. The tracking is beautiful. It's obviously had recent, very expensive tires. And it's everything you could wish for. It's also had super and leaded from day one, never been run on premium gas, never been on a track day. For me, this car is ticking all the boxes. Now, I have no idea what this car will go for on sale day, but I will imagine it will probably be a very expensive item. But mark my words, and this is gonna go on video, I don't think this is gonna be very long before cars like this, really nice right-hand drive, UK manual twin turbo cars will be a hundred thousand pound car. They will soon be 911 turbo money without doubt because they're rarer and dare I say they're cooler. So have a look at this one. It is a very lovely thing. It is something that I think you could enjoy and drive a little bit and also invest and make a few quid on. And they're the best kind of cars of all, aren't they? I think you're looking at one of the truly great investment cars of this year. So if you are thinking of one, if you've always dreamed of one, the prices are only going one way. That's the sad truth. So get on that train because I don't think you'll ever get one this nice again for this kind of money. So do register to bid, do get involved, and if you want it, good luck, I hope you get it. It's magnificent. And please can I have a go if you do buy it.